Okay, a little bit of scripture background. Um, our scripture tonight comes from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, and it is Jesus' baptism. He is entering into public ministry, and Jesus comes to his cousin, John the Baptist, who has been doing a great deal of baptizing out in the Jordan River. John is surprised to see that Jesus, that Jesus wants John to baptize him. Let's listen to the scripture. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he was coming up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. You may remain seated. Oh, my daughter, I've mentioned this before, my daughter Valerie is, um, she is studying in Germany. She's a sophomore in college, she's studying in Germany, and in March, my son and I, who is 17 and a junior in high school, we are going to go during his spring break to Germany and visit her, and as you can imagine, we're pretty excited about that. Um, when you're going to go on a trip like that, and you're not used to traveling like that, and we're not, there's, there's things that you have to take care of, and really the the first thing you have to take care of is you, you've got to get your passport if you don't have one. My son didn't have one, and mine needed to be updated, so we, we did that. We did that. We're all ready to go. And, you know, you think about this, it's fascinating. I mean, there's no point in getting your tickets unless you've got your passport, because you can't get out of this country without one. And you think about the information that's in a passport. It's, it's basic. It's your name. I think it's your birth date. Uh, where you live, and a picture of you from here up, that you may look like that, you know, six months from then, but that's really all the information that's in there. But that is absolutely critical to the authorities for you to get out of the country and to get back in. You absolutely have to have a passport if you are going to travel outside of the country. It's critical. So that information about me must be pretty darned important. That must be who I am. Those must be the most important things about me. Hmm. It's everything the authorities want to know. So think about this. If you were at a party and there were some people there you hadn't met before and somebody came up to you and said, tell me something about yourself. Would your first response be to get out your passport and share it with them? <laughs> this is critical information. This is what the authorities want to know. What more could you possibly want to know? This is all they want to know. Is that what people want to know when they want to meet you? When they say, tell me a little something about you? Well, yeah, they actually probably would like to know your name. They already know what you look like. They don't need to see your picture. It's kind of rude to ask your birth date too soon. You know, what they want to know is more like uh, who, who you are, what you do, you know? Like, like how do you spend your time? Um, you know, when you first meet people, you kind of keep it on the surface, kind of how you spend your time, and maybe, um, you know, if you have family or kids, you know, you try and find some connections that way, that kind of stuff. And sometimes with some people you meet, that's about as far as you want to go. But other people, you meet them and you think, oh, this, you know, this person could maybe be a good friend. So maybe you meet up again, and you have an opportunity to talk again, and this time maybe you go a little further, you know, and you talk a little bit about maybe where you were born, and maybe a little bit about your parents, and a little bit about your upbringing, you know. And as you, as you gradually develop a relationship, those, those conversations, they go a little deeper. You're a little more vulnerable. You, you, you build trust. See, see, what are we doing when we're sharing? What is it we're sharing when we're doing that? We're sharing stories. We're sharing the stories of our life. Little stories from the time we are very young. 
Little stories make up our entire life. And there's kind of these layers of stories. There's the ones that you're willing to share with people you don't know very well, and they're the ones that you save for the people that you have the most intimate relationship because you trust them. But when we want to get to know somebody and when they want to get to know us, what they want to know is our story. And then we listen. And then as we get to know them better, we build on those stories. And the thing is, you know, we never know somebody completely. We can't. Frankly, we don't know ourselves completely because every day we grow and change. Every day. So no matter how well you think you know somebody, there's always more to learn. Always more to learn. Now this kind of relationship between people is the same kind of thing that has to do with Jesus. This is how we get to know who Jesus is. It's stories. The Bible. The Bible is full of stories. The Bible overall, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, has to do with God's overall uh, reconciliation of God's people. But there are things that happen in the Old Testament you need to know to understand the New Testament. And we, and we get to know Jesus through the stories. Jesus speaks to us through those stories. Jesus helps us understand who Jesus is through those stories. That's how we get to know Jesus better. Much of what many of us know about Jesus, we learned as children. If you were fortunate enough to go to Sunday school when you were a child, I really didn't. I was real hit and miss. Um, I knew the Easter and Christmas story because those are the services we went to during the year. But if you were fortunate enough to go to church as a child, to go to Sunday school, very often the stories that you were learning in Sunday school were about Jesus. Okay. And for many of us in the church, really the last time we really looked at the Bible or even taught about the Bible outside of worship, when we were children. And so our understanding of Jesus, our relationship with Jesus, or our understanding with Jesus is kind of like the relationship that you have with somebody when you just kind of just met them. And it hasn't gone very deep. It hasn't gone very deep. And the thing is, as an adult, if you went back into those same stories as an adult, they would mean completely different things to you now than they did as a child. Completely different things. Over the next eight weeks, we are going to be getting to know Jesus better. We are in the season of Lent. This is a wonderful, wonderful time to do this. Through the stories of the Bible, we're going to go beyond Beyond knowing Jesus, all the different titles, Son of Man, Son of God, the Messiah, what does that mean? And try and get to know who he is better. Rather than just learning about Jesus, we want to get to know Jesus through this time. So, in our scripture tonight, this is one of the really important stories, and it's a real jump-off place, because... Jesus is just entering into his public ministry. Now you think about this. John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. And John the Baptist has been aware of who Jesus is for years, for years. If you remember, when Mary was first pregnant with Jesus, she went to go see her uh, cousin Elizabeth, who was six months pregnant, pregnant with John the Baptist. And when Mary walked into the room, John the Baptist jumped all over inside his mom. And Elizabeth said, even my baby recognizes the mother of the Savior. So John the Baptist knew before he was ever born who Jesus was. And he's been waiting, I think, and preparing the way, preparing the way, preparing the way. So what, what John the Baptist is doing is he's out at the Jordan River, and he is, if you want to say fire and brimstone preacher, that would be him. He calls people broods of vipers. He's... He's, he's rough on folks, and he's preaching repentance. You know, uh, turn around and live a holy life. And then what he does is he gets them into the Jordan River and he baptizes them, and the idea is that's kind of the cleansing away of that old life. The cleansing away of that old life. And at one point, there's Jewish leaders who really do start to think that maybe John the Baptist is the Messiah. They come to him and they ask him. 
And he says, no, 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 no. I am the light that points toward the light. I am the light that points toward the light, but there is someone among you you don't recognize, and I am not worthy to tie the thongs on his sandal. And then in this scripture what happens is Jesus shows up. He shows up on the banks of the Jordan River. Now, this is really pretty smart when you think there wasn't any media coverage back then because John the Baptist was drawing large, large groups out there, and people were listening to him. John the Baptist had his own disciples. So Jesus shows up there with all these people who are listening to John the Baptist, and there's reasons for that. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. He can't believe it. But Jesus answered, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. There's a number of things that are happening. There's a number of things that are happening here. First of all, Jesus' baptism marks the beginning of his public ministry, and this is really important. This is his initiation into his public ministry. At his baptism, John the Baptist publicly announces the arrival of the Messiah to everyone who is there. And everyone is watching this baptism. At his baptism, Jesus completely identifies himself with humanity's sin and failure. And see, the thing is, there's no reason for Jesus to have been baptized. He had no sin. He didn't need to repent. But he identifies himself so closely to humanity. He would not ask his disciples to do anything that he would not do himself. And so he goes through the ritual of baptism. His baptism is an example that he sets for all who come after him. So while everyone is watching this, what happens? When Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Kind of a good start to his ministry, to his public ministry. Don't you think? Kind of a wonderful way to get started. There is so much in these five verses. You could spend a week just studying this. We talk about when we're young and we're in Sunday school, Jesus' baptism. We don't dig in. We need to dig in. We need to, we need to draw closer. We need to learn who Jesus is, not stay on the outside of it, not be satisfied with what we have learned up to this point. Even if you were in a Bible study five years ago, if you looked at it again now, it would mean something different to you at this point. We grow, we change, we learn, and we need to stay in connection with the Bible. So no matter how well you think you know Jesus, there is always something more to learn. During the season of Lent, we're going to be listening and looking more closely at the stories of Jesus' life. And I think, this, I think you're going to enjoy this. We're going to dig into some of these and get a better idea of who he is through the stories of Jesus. And as Jesus shares his stories through scripture and through worship, my hope is that we are all drawn deeper into a deeper relationship with him. This is the season of Lent. This is what Lent is all about. We need a more intimate relationship with him, and as we grow in our understanding and appreciation of who he is, that each and every one of us then could have the courage to take a closer look at our own lives, which is what we really need to do. We need to, with Jesus, discover those things about our life that we need to celebrate, because there are things about our life that we absolutely need to celebrate. And then there are things about our lives that we know need to change. And with Jesus, finding these things out with him, drawing closer to him through his stories and through prayer, sharing who we are with him, then having the courage to make those changes in the season of Lent. That's what this time is all about. My hope is that this season of Lent for all of us would be a time of greater awareness. 
that it would be a time of necessary change and courage to make that change. That it would be a time of forgiveness that you can feel. Forgiveness that you can feel. That it would be a time of healing, body, mind, and spirit. And that it would be a time of reconciliation through a deeper and more meaningful relationship with Jesus. I hope that this season of Lent is truly, truly a transformational time for all of us. A transformational time. Thanks be to God who knows us better than we know ourselves, knows what we need, who never gives up on us, and never lets us go. Amen.